And thank you to everyone from around the country and the world for joining us this afternoon here at the Midland Theater for what promises to be a monumental day for our state and ultimately our country. I'm Michaela Hunt and I'm thrilled to be your MC today as we come together to celebrate the next frontier of innovation for Intel and the great state of Ohio. I have a few people on stage with me this afternoon who have been working hard behind the scenes to make today's announcement possible. Please join me in welcoming Ohio Governor Mike DeWine, Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger, <laughs> Intel Senior Vice President of Manufacturing and Supply Chain Operations Kayvon Esfarjani, <laughs> President of The Ohio State University Christina Johnson, and Lieutenant Governor John Husted. Now, we'll have an opportunity for, to hear from each of our distinguished panelists in just a few minutes, but first, because today's announcement will have a positive, long-lasting economic impact on the entire state, I want to welcome our friends throughout the Jobs Ohio network in cities across the state. Take a look at everyone joining us from around the state. We have watch parties from Dayton to Cincinnati, Cleveland, and beyond. Thank you to Jobs Ohio for bringing us all here together today. It really is a special moment. I can feel the excitement, and I know you can feel the excitement as well. Here in Ohio, we have a strong, proud history of innovation and manufacturing, but today we officially embark on a new era, welcoming a brand new industry to both Ohio and the Midwest. To do this, we partnered with an American company and a global leader in semiconductor manufacturing. Our future together starts now. Ohio, there is no better place. There are no stronger people to answer the call as a manufacturing powerhouse and partner with a powerful manufacturer to create something wonderful. Something essential. Ohio manufactures growth. Ohio manufactures opportunity. Ohio manufactures the future. The groundwork has been laid. Ohio, you were built for this. Right? We were built for this. And you're ready, right? I hear it today in Midland and across the state. Right now, it is my great honor and privilege to welcome to the podium the governor of the great state of Ohio, Mike DeWine. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Michaela, thank you. Michaela, thank you very much. It's always great to be in Licking County. Thanks, everybody, for being here. This is uh, really an, an exciting day for all of us. Uh, I think we're expecting the, the secretary here. I don't think she is here yet. But I uh, want to just um, thank everybody. I know, Pat, that you had a good morning at, at, the, at the White House. And... Um, but I want to really thank everybody who, who is here today. Um, if you look at uh, the people who have come, it's so great. Um, Senator Portman and Brown, I know, were at the White House this morning. We, we thank them uh, for that. Uh, Congressman Balderson, Johnson, Kerry, uh, we thank them. We thank all the Ohio congressional delegation, who frankly has been so great for the, <clears throat> the CHIP Act. Your state Senator Hollinger, Representative Frazier Miller, uh, we're so grateful for their support and for their help and their great support of this project. Um, nothing happens in this state without county commissioners, and uh, we thank county commissioners Flowers, Black, and Bub. Thank you uh, for all that you've done to make this possible. Uh, you've been really instrumental in that. Great. 
Mayor Hall, it's great to be at the historic Midland Theater here uh, in Newark once again, a great, great place. Thank you for your, for your leadership. Let me also thank uh, New Albany Mayor Spalding for his help on this project. Um, his help is going to be continued to be needed as we move forward. Let me also thank uh, Jersey Township Trustees Fry, Wetzel, and Peeper. Thank you very, very much for, for your leadership. Um, Pat, Ohio is a local government state, and uh, things happen locally. It comes from, from the grassroots, and, and we like it that way in Ohio. I think it's what makes Ohio really special. And we've just been so very, very lucky to have all of this local support. And on a personal basis, uh, I want to thank Speaker Bob Cup, Senate President Matt Huffman. Thank you very, very much. Um, they were instrumental in passing legislation this past summer. And if that had not passed, we would simply not be here today. So thank you both. Uh, this is a great moment, and we're very, very grateful for what you've done. It's a special day, uh, a, a great day in Ohio history. Uh, we're so happy to welcome to Ohio Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger and Intel Senior Vice President Kayvon S. Forjani. Thank you both for very much. We, we have gotten to know them very, very well in the last, in the last few months, and that relationship is, is going to continue. They bring to Ohio today great news. Intel has chosen Ohio. <laughs> They've chosen a site in Northwest Licking County to build two, two state-of-the-art fabrication facilities to make semiconductor chips right here, Licking County, right here in Ohio. <laughs> this is a major win for Ohio, and it's really a game changer, a game changer for our economic future. You know, Intel could have put these plants anywhere in the country. In fact, there were 40 states that were competing to trying to get these plants. And we won. Ohio won. They chose Ohio. <laughs> Our first contact with Intel occurred on May 3rd of last year. We received later on Christmas Day the letter telling us that Ohio had been chosen. Throughout that summer, that fall, our team led by J.P. Nassif and Lydia Mihalik worked very, very long hours and worked so very hard on this project. We worked, we fought, and we won to bring these jobs to Ohio. You know, this victory really builds on our history as a great manufacturing state. Intel joins a growing list of manufacturing companies that have made the decision to come to Ohio or to expand in Ohio. Here's just a few recent examples from all over the Buckeye State. Cleveland Cliffs built a state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in Lucas County to make steel. Sherwin-Williams is building a new research facility in Brexville, and they're building their new headquarters in downtown Cleveland. And then there's Pella Corporation in the Miami Valley, Global Cooling in Athens County, Audium Cell in the Mahoning Valley, Nestle Perina in Claremont County, and so many, many, many more. Intel's 20 billion, that's billion, 20 billion dollar investment in the two fabrication facilities will employ 3,000 people directly. They will have an average salary of $135,000 per person. <laughs> then there are all the construction jobs. The project will bring at least 7,000 construction jobs to Ohio. 
Pat, we have an amazing group of craftsmen and tradesmen here in Ohio. Today, earlier, I talked to my friend, Matt Salazzi, with the Building Trades, and he told me, Governor, you bring these companies to Ohio, and we will build them. <laughs> this is also going to bring to Ohio tens of thousands of indirect and support jobs. Intel already has 140 suppliers in Ohio, and with this plant, they're going to add many, many more all over the state. What makes this announcement truly transformative for Ohio, and let's think about that, is that from now on, any company, any place that is thinking about opening a new plant will simply have to give Ohio a good look. It matters. <clears throat> Intel, of course, will be making semiconductor chips right here. These chips are the, the tiny brains that are in devices that power everything from the cell phone in your pocket, to your car, to a farmer's combine, to all our consumer electronics and so much, much more. Simply put, chips are the foundation that modern life is really a part of. It's really what makes modern life possible. And let's talk also for a moment about national security, because this is about national security. It's so vitally important that we make these chips right here in the United States of America. <laughs> Let's go back a little bit, but look what's happened. In 1990, the United States was a world leader in chip production. It had nearly 40% of the world's production capacity. But today, that number has fallen to 12% while countries in Asia have 75% of the world's chip capacity. Simply put, simply put, we must. We must make more products right here in the United States. And there is no better place to manufacture any of them than right here in Ohio, made by Ohioans. Fran and I were born and raised here, and we think this is just an absolutely amazing state. In Ohio, we have an abundance of water, water that Ohio works every single day to protect. Location, location. We're within a day's drive of 60% of the population of the United States and of Canada. And then there's education. We have 14 public universities, 74 private colleges and universities, 23 community colleges, and a host of great career centers all over Ohio that can pro provide terrific talent to Intel and other companies coming into Ohio. You're going to hear in a moment from Dr. Johnson of Ohio State. She's here representing Ohio State, but also all the other great institutions that we have in Ohio. Ohio has also created a consistently, consistently great business climate. And Ohioans, Ohio and Pat are just darn hard workers. <laughs> Truly, there's no better place in the world to start a business than Ohio. No better place to grow a business. No better place to live. And no better place to raise a family. <laughs> From May of this year through Christmas Eve, we had hundreds and hundreds of virtual meetings, calls, in-person meetings. We met at my state house office, and Fran and I had them over for breakfast at the governor's residence. We got to know each other. And you know, it's true in any good long-term relationship, there needs to be, above all else, trust. And we've developed that trust. Ohio, innovation, cutting-edge manufacturing, fearless daring, relentless op optimism, these are all, all in our Ohio DNA. Ohioans are makers, 
inventors, creators, from the Wright brothers inventing flight to Neil Armstrong walking on the moon, Charles Kettering and his automobile self-starter, Thomas Edison, and so many, many more. Ohioans have always been dreamers, and we've always been doers. Intel's announcement today just confirms that once again, this is Ohio's time in history. <laughs> this, this is our time. We have an opportunity to lead once again. Intel's announcement today is a signal to China and to the rest of the world that from now on, our essential manufactured products in, the, in this country will be made in the United States of America. <laughs> the man I'm going to introduce to you now grew up in western Pennsylvania, not that far from Ohio. And you know, I've learned over the last few months that he clearly shares our Ohio values. Please welcome, please welcome Intel President, Intel CEO, Pat Gelsinger, and let's give him a warm Buckeye welcome with OH. Oh. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you, Governor DeWine, and for the welcoming today, and for your partnership on this exciting project. And well, I did come from Pennsylvania, sorry about that, but you were just next door, and I love that Buckeye welcome. You know, I am thrilled to be here in Ohio, such a beautiful part of the country. And, uh, you know, being raised in Pennsylvania, the rolling hills, the farm hills, you know, I'd feel as comfortable going and helping to fill one of those silos as I am here as building one of these uh, fabs. And uh, it's no small feat. And as the governor mentioned, Intel is coming to Ohio. <laughs> you know, we're building, this is our first major site announcement in 40 years. You know, and as we've uh, seen, as we've done throughout it, throughout our uh, history, we come to a site and we build for a long time. And that's what we're announcing today in Licking County. It's exciting for me and it's exciting for us as a team to get to spend a lot more time in Ohio, in Licking County, starting today. You know, and just to kick off our partnership, I want to give uh, the governor a little gift of our newest manufacturing site, a wafer. And that's what we do. These amazing things called silicon chips are made from these wafers. So, Governor, please join me here. Ohio, you were built for Intel, January 21st, 2022. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. You know, we also, I think Secretary Raimondo has now arrived uh, here joining us today. Thank you so much. We had the pleasure of being uh, together at the White House this morning. Secretary Graves, Lieutenant Governor Husted uh, with us, uh, Christina Johnson from Ohio. You know, we also uh, now have our uh, esteemed senators uh, joining us today. You know, thank you so much, Senator Brown and Portman. It is truly a pleasure to be with you this morning and again this afternoon. You know, this site is gonna be strengthening Ohio's leadership in research and high technology. And we expect that Intel Ohio will become one of, if not the largest semiconductor manufacturing sites in the world over the next decade. This is a great day. And this great state, you know, as we uh, looked at and we uh, competed across the uh, world to pick this site, you know, the long and deep history of manufacturing in Ohio was a clear draw for why we wanted to come here. You know, essential industries from, you know, automobiles to chemicals manufacture in Ohio. And so what better place for us to build our next major manufacturing location 
and be this frontier of technology? Ohio. And one of the most profound lessons that we have collectively learned through the pandemic is that we can't take the access of technology and manufacturing for granted. You know, we've seen the disruptions to our global supply chain. The demand for semiconductors is truly unprecedented today. And many industries, many factories, you know, auto manufacturers, you know, are stopped because of a $2 chip. You know, imagine that, a $30,000 car manufacturing line, you know, everybody has to go home for a $2 chip. You know, this is clearly unacceptable and we have to control and manage our supply chains. And every aspect, now just think about it for a moment. Tell me what part of your life is not becoming more digital. Every aspect of human existence is becoming more digital and everything digital depends on semiconductors. Semiconductors are the brains that are powering, you know, everything that goes on in our economic uh, future, the competitiveness, and as the governor said, our national security as well. Education, business, medicine, transportation, defense, infrastructure, everything relies on chips. And we've seen that from work from home, educate from home, healthcare from home. And with Intel's investment in manufacturing capacity, we are the company that helped to put silicon in Silicon Valley. When we moved to Oregon, we established the Silicon Forest. When we went to Arizona, we helped to establish the Silicon Desert. We went to Ireland, we helped to create the Silicon Isle. We went to Israel, and we helped to establish the Silicon Oasis. And today, the Silicon Heartland begins. <laughs> this is the largest single private sector investment in Ohio history. Ohio now becomes the heart of the digital age and the digital future. Spanning nearly 1,000 acres, our new mega site can accommodate a total of eight chip factories over its life. You know, today we're starting with the first two with a clear intention to build more. Today, we start with a first commitment of 3,000 jobs, 7,000 construction jobs. You know, if there's a concrete chuck in the state of Ohio that's not working for me next year, I want to know about it. <laughs> and every job we create typically creates 10 other jobs because it builds an ecosystem of long-term support, suppliers, schools, partners that's supporting. It becomes a tech hub of the entire community. And that's what we've seen every place we've gone around the world. This spawns a center of technology innovation. In addition, today we're pleased to also announce plans to invest an additional hundred million over the next decade to help develop and attract a pipeline of skilled, diverse talent and bolster research programs in the region as well. These, <laughs> th this building of a talent pipeline, it's no small reason that uh, we have Ohio State represented today because, you know, every one of your best students, I know where I want them, right? You know, there's just going to be a thoroughfare from Ohio State, but not just Ohio State, but all of the excellent universities across the Midwest and the heartland. We want your best and brightest participating with us. We intend to partner with Ohio universities, community colleges, National Science Foundation, a broadening of research and collaboration projects and you know building semiconductor specific curriculum and manufacturing agendas you know everything from associate degrees up to the highest end phd degrees we need the full range of capabilities and you hear more about this this morning from Dr. Johnson, herself a renowned engineer, and we were trading notes from our Stanford uh, past, a champion of STEM education, and we're just delighted to have her, Ohio State, and the entire university system of the region supporting us in this project. The new factories we'll build in Ohio are part of our strategy to increase semiconductor R&D and global manufacturing, restoring U.S. semiconductor and manufacturing leadership. In addition to providing capacity for Intel's products, we're also throwing the doors open on our factory to become a foundry for 
everybody's building of their semiconductor products as well. Our business expansion called Intel Foundry Services, our product, but the industry's products as well. And this opening up of our doors will enable us to create a more geographically balanced and more resilient semiconductor supply chain for the world. Intel's factories here in Ohio will support the most advanced process technologies. Today, you know, 10, 7, 5 nanometers. Well, we're going to go a lot further than that here in Ohio to 2 nanometers and below. This will be the most advanced process capabilities in the world. Our foundry customers need these for their next generation products across a range of applications from automobiles to high performance computing to artificial intelligence to mobile devices. All of those manufactured here supporting local and global markets. You know, this will include the unique needs of our defense department as well as our security and intelligence needs as well. We're doing our part, as we said, we're one of the companies that helped put silicon into Silicon Valley. Today, it's the Silicon Heartland. And Intel is the company that can help rebuild the US presence in this industry. And we're gonna be building this out over the next five years as we get this up and running, and we're just getting started. Last year, we announced an investment of $23.5 billion in our Arizona and our New Mexico facilities. And we're just finishing up now, and we'll soon have an opening ceremony of expansion uh, for a $3 billion expansion in our Oregon facility. Overall, we've invested more than $50 billion in our Arizona fabs since we opened that site 40 years ago. And we've grown to directly employ more than 21,000 people and support about 100,000 people through our supplier and network ecosystem in that region. These get to be big projects. And as we've shown, we continue to invest in our sites, and we plan to do exactly that here. At full build-out, Ohio could grow to be as much as $100 billion of investments over the next decade. And our partners here in Ohio, they recognize the value of public investment in unlocking private capital to bring manufacturing in a high demand industry to train, reskill, upskill, and attract this robust ecosystem right here in Ohio. These investments will help build a resilient supply chain, ensure reliable access to advanced semiconductors in the United States for years, nay, for decades to come. The federal government has also shown strong bipartisan support for growing this industry. And it was truly you know, one of those life moments when I had the opportunity this morning to say, and now it's my honor to introduce the President of the United States. Can you imagine a farm kid from Pennsylvania being able to introduce the President of the United States? And this morning we had the President reaffirm his commitment to the CHIPS Act and the participation of Secretary Raimondo, senators joining us on stage there, clear and strong messages of support, but we need to get the CHIPS Act done. The administration has been a strong champion of investing in the U.S. for manufacturing, and we appreciate and thank the efforts of those here in Ohio legislators for their strong and ongoing support as well. But I'd also say we're making this bet today, assuming CHIPS Act gets done. We're building the site. We're getting started. But we need Congress to quickly and affirmatively act to finish CHIPS Act and get it funded because I want the project to be bigger and faster as a result of the support of the CHIPS Act. And I ask everybody to reinforce that to your delegation and to those across the nation. Get this done so we can go bigger and faster to reassert American leadership in this critical industry of semiconductors. We welcome the opportunity to work with all of you to transform in this tumultuous time 
into a period of recovery to deliver and create world-changing technologies that literally will improve the lives of every person on the planet. And with that, I thank you for such a warm welcome to Ohio. And it's now my pleasure to introduce Kevin Esfarjani, who he's the guy who's gonna make it happen. I get to stand up here on stage. This is the guy who gotta build it, run it, and operate it. So please welcome the most important person in Ohio, Kayvon. Thank you, thank you, Bob. appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Governor Devine. It's my honor to be with you today. As Pat noted, I, hear, I lead Intel's global manufacturing supply chain and operations organizations. And I'm so excited about Intel's first new greenfield manufacturing site in 40 years with the plans to make it not just the largest site in Intel, but one of the largest semiconductor manufacturing sites in the world, right here in the Silicon Heartland. <laughs> Ohio is the perfect location for Intel's Megafab site selection. Such a large commitment is no simple task. It took more than nine months with hundreds of our team members evaluating several hundred criteria. And after carefully considering multiple sites across the country, we ultimately decided that Licking County, Ohio was our best choice. <laughs> and it came down to which location offered the best prospect to enable Intel to run our world-class leading edge semiconductor manufacturing facility with strong infrastructure, favorable regulatory environment, and most importantly, the ability to attract and develop a diverse talent. And being in semiconductor manufacturing means competing every day. Ohio has a culture deep in its roots to do what it takes to win. Here, we are all in on Ohio. We are so impressed by the partnership developed with the local and state leaders. This is only the start of our many decade long marriage. I want to share some perspective on a project of this magnitude. Intel began operations in Arizona in the 80s in a small agricultural town. Since then, our operation in Chandler have become a manufacturing powerhouse generating an annual economic impact of 8.6 billion in the state. And I want to share that Intel today employs more than 12,000 in Arizona and our operations support more than 60,000 jobs in the region. We have similar levels of impact at our other US manufacturing sites in Oregon and New Mexico. Now we are bringing these benefits to Ohio. A semiconductor factory is not like other factories. In fact, once it's built, we meticulously install one of the most technologically advanced pieces of equipment on Earth, which require a diverse team of highly trained engineers and technicians to operate them. These marvels of manufacturing produce some of the most complex products ever known to human with electronic circuitry as small as strands of DNA. And at full build out, this mega site in Ohio could offer enough total clean room space to cover over 30 Ohio State football fields and produce millions of chips every day. At Intel, we strive to be world-class in everything that we do. And with leadership comes responsibility. Building a semiconductor manufacturing mega site requires commitment, 
to serve the local community and protect the environment. The new site will be designed and constructed with green building principles and aim to be powered by 100% renewable energy, meet the exceptional water conservation standards, and achieve zero waste to landfill in support of Intel's 2030 sustainability goals. And Intel's culture is strongly rooted in community service in the areas we live and work. Our employees volunteer their time and talents to support their communities. And the Intel Foundation provides matching grant opportunities to local nonprofit organizations. We are committed to helping develop and attract skilled talent from within the region through partnership with Ohio universities community colleges, local STEM learning organizations, and other top universities here in the Midwest. We are also committed and would be proud to be hiring and training more US military service members and veterans who are already part of our Intel family. And building this semiconductor mega size is like building a small city, which brings forth a vibrant com community of supporting services and suppliers. As Pat mentioned, we plan to hire approximately 3,000 Intel jobs to support the first two fabs, which will scan skills from technicians with two-year associate degrees, all the way up to PhDs working to advance the limits of science to improve the products that we make. Additionally, this operation will create tens of thousands of indirect jobs across our suppliers and partners. Together, let's now travel to our new site and see what is it all about. Welcome to Intel Team Ohio. We're so excited to be part of the Silicon Heart Lab. I'm standing on the nearly 1,000 acre property in Licking County where Intel will soon build two new state-of-the-art chip factories. Intel's Ohio factories, or FABs, will be the company's first brand new U.S. manufacturing site in more than 40 years. Intel saw in Ohio what Ohioans see every single day. It's a great place to live, to raise your family, but to also have a successful career, successful business, and Intel saw that. Ohio was built for this opportunity. Ohio is an ideal location for Intel's next fab because of its access to top talent, its robust, extensive infrastructure, and its long history as a manufacturing powerhouse. Just like in Oregon, Arizona, and New Mexico, an Intel fab starts as an empty plot of land. Within a few years, thanks to the hard work of thousands of people and billions of dollars invested, the result is one of the most advanced tech facilities on Earth. Well, semiconductors uh, are a part of everything uh, that we do in our everyday lives. Uh, they help keep us connected, uh, and so we're really excited about the opportunity to be able to make them right here uh, in the state of Ohio. Ohio joins Intel chip manufacturing sites at three other U.S. states and a global factory network spanning Europe, Asia, and Central America. I cannot tell you how happy and proud I am that Intel has chosen Ohio for this great honor. Building a fab is a construction marvel. Intel's two Ohio fabs will create 3,000 high-tech jobs, 7,000 construction jobs, and thousands more jobs in the supply chain and in local communities. They're gonna bring a lot to our culture. They're gonna bring a lot to um, uh, our economy. And we'd like to think that Ohio's gonna make them a better company. One fab alone requires 35,000 tons of structural steel, or five times the weight of the Eiffel Tower. A clean room can be as large as four football fields and hold more than 1,200 advanced multi-million dollar chip making tools. All of this to create the most complex technology on earth, a computer chip like this, often not much larger than your fingernail. Intel is one of the few remaining chip companies in the world and the only American one that does it all in-house, design, manufacture, ship, and sell. And now we couldn't be more excited to join you all in Ohio.
Folks, the demand for CHIP and Intel's leadership products is stronger than ever before. So our goal is to start construction of our two factories in Ohio as soon as possible. My boss here always reminds me, go faster, go faster. <laughs> With a strong partnership at the state level and the support from the local construction trades, we aim to start building no later than end of this year. And at the federal level, as Pat mentioned, we are very encouraged by the bipartisan support for the Chips for America Act, which is critically important to maintain the pace of a project of this magnitude. We admire the region's proud heritage as an industrial and manufacturing powerhouse. On behalf of my 37,000 Intel manufacturing team members around the globe, I would like to welcome the Ohio team to our family. Together as one Intel team, we are so excited to help create the best in class semiconductor manufacturing and supply chain here in Ohio. <laughs> and next, I would like to introduce President of Ohio State University. She's a renowned engineer a highly successful businesswoman, and an astute educator, and we are delighted to have her partnership, which is so critical and a key pillar for our success. Please help me to welcome Dr. Christina Johnson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, that was great. What a great day for Ohio, and what a great day for the United States. I want to thank everyone who made this possible. Too many to name, but especially Governor Mike DeWine. The tone starts at the top. And Lieutenant Governor John Houston. <laughs> Members of our General Assembly, Jobs Ohio President and CEO, J.P. Nassif, Columbus Partnership CEO, Kenny McDonald, and Dr. Grace Wong, Executive Vice President for the Enterprise for Research, Knowledge, and Innovation at Ohio State. I also want to recognize U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo, Senator Sherrod Brown, and Senator Rob Portman, and our Congressman Troy Balderson, Mike Carey, and Bill Johnson. We thank all of them for joining us today for this historic announcement. And as we welcome Mr. Pat Gelsinger and Intel, Kayvon, we are so honored to represent Ohio, I am so honored to represent Ohio's exceptional higher education sector. I know that the state's deep and broad educational resources were key to Intel's decision to choose Ohio for this, and for this semiconductor campus. And we're all here to help you achieve the vision that you shared with Leslie Stahl in 60 Minutes, which is that we want Intel and the United States to rebalance the global chip making capacity. Today, the majority of advanced semiconductor devices are fabricated by the Taiwan, Taiwanese chip manufacturing, or TSMC, and Korean chip manufacturer, Samsung. I know both of these organizations well. I actually fabricated the first chips I designed through TSMC, and I collaborated with Samsung to integrate these silicon photonic devices into rear projection display systems. It's truly exciting that Intel is going to put the United States back in the business of state-of-the-art semiconductor manufacturing right here at home, right here in Ohio. I hope you don't mind, I'm going to go off a little script here, Pat, just to say, uh, over the past 40 years, we've watched Moore's Law shrink transistor line widths from microns to nanometers. And that allows us to drive up the density of trans transistors on a chip by a factor of a million. We've also watched, not so famous, but Moore's second law, which has become a reality too, and that is the cost of semiconductor processing facilities also grows nonlinearly, which is why this investment is even more remarkable 40 years on. But success here will require well-educated scientists, engineers, technicians, and managers. And Mr. Gelsinger, at the time you joined Intel, I was carrying out independent research in the clean rooms of our alma mater, learning about semiconductor and photolithographic processing, 
And I was taught by technicians who had gone through the Foothills Community College semiconductor processing curriculum. You may remember Foothills Community College. So I saw firsthand the importance of a really skilled technical workforce and the power of connecting two-year and four-year research institutions. And as a leading research and land-grant institution, The Ohio State University is delighted to partner with Ohio Department of Higher Education Chancellor Randy Gardner and with the entire state, 14 public universities, 74 private universities, 24 regional campuses, 23 community colleges, and 52 other technical centers on projects that will include faculty training and curriculum development, all with the goal of preparing the workforce to support the semiconductor industry for decades to come. And Mr. Gelsinger, I think you will discover that our community spirit here in Ohio is just as great as our intellectual heft. Our wonderful partner, Columbus State Community College, led by President David Harrison, is ready to teach technicians and operators for the Intel campus. And at Ohio State, we are well prepared to produce the engineers, the scientists, and the business professionals that this project needs, while enabling exciting collaborations with Intel to advance research and to serve our country. In support of a high-tech renaissance in manufacturing, Ohio State recently launched a Bachelor of Science degree in Engineering Technology, or BSET, with a concentration in manufacturing at our regional campuses under the leadership of Deans William McDonald and Ayanna Howard. The program is coming soon to Ohio State Newark. And I, yeah. and let me just close with a few observations. On the way to Newark today, you might have noticed the absence of new cars in dealership parking lots, which is, of course, about car makers' inability to get semiconductor chips. Semiconductor manufacturers around the globe simply cannot keep pace with the pandemic-induced demand. As smartphone makers, defense contractors, information and communication technology companies, medical device makers, and appliance manufacturers all vie for chips, there are serious economic and national security risks if we don't boost making chips in the United States. So today, as we celebrate a great step forward in Ohio's transformation into the Silicon Heartland, let's also celebrate this as a win for the national interest and the new possibilities for our current and future students. Given our increasingly diverse student bodies, Intel Semiconductor Campus, and the many spin-out jobs it will generate can help close racial, ethnic, and gender gaps in STEM employment and income, because the median STEM salary is 65% more than STEM job, non-STEM jobs. At Ohio State, as at Intel, those of us who have great lives because of our own access to STEM and STEAM education are committed to spreading such opportunities as widely as possible. Obviously, today is just the start of something very big. The need for Intel semiconductors is only going to grow as our digital economy expands as we apply artificial intelligence and machine learning to many challenges in our world. I'm so glad that this is happening in a state that's made such intelligent investments in higher education and that is ready to lead a global economy that is growing ever smarter, faster, and more sustainable. Thank you again. And now I'd like to ask Lieutenant Governor John Husted to come to the podium. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this is great. Great energy, love that. We're having some fun today. This is fantastic. Uh, I hope you will indulge me in a little levity though. Uh, when America's foremost manufacturer of semiconductors was looking for a state to make a product that is shaped like this, right? Of course, they chose Ohio, right? <laughs> Uh, Intel, welcome to Ohio. I hope you feel loved. So having worked on economic development policy and projects for most of my life, I want to speak directly to the people of Ohio about why this project is so important to the future of our state's economy. Ohio is a reflection of America. It has reflected the highs and the lows of the American economy. Like many Ohioans, I've personally experienced both. Around the time I graduated high school, yes, all the way back in the, 
in the mid-1980s, my family had to leave Ohio to find work because the machine tool factory where my dad and several of my aunts and uncles worked was going out of business. And when you live in a town of 4,000 people and the large employer goes out of business, there aren't many options. I know there are thousands of Ohioans who could tell similar stories about Ohio's past. A decade later, I started working in economic development. I was enthusiastic to sell Ohio, but back in the mid-1990s, Ohio was a tough sell. The global economy was negatively affecting the Midwest. Factories were closing. The industrial age was transitioning to the innovation age, and Ohio was not ready for it. That was then. This is now. Ohio has changed. We have diversified our economy, cut taxes, and created a competitive business environment. We have a low cost of living and a high quality of life. Today, preparation meets opportunity, and Ohio is winning again. <laughs> Failures in the domestic supply chain have revealed the need to reshore the manufacturing of essential components of America's economy. Ohio saw the opportunity and seized it, and we will help America lead as the high-tech manufacturer of the products Americans need and use every day, like semiconductors. The Ohio economy is constantly changing. Something to remember, it's, things are always changing. Some of the businesses and jobs that exist today will at some point begin to fade away. We must compete to win the future, the jobs and the businesses that will be here tomorrow. Just as candles gave way to light bulbs, carriages gave way to cars, and now engines to battery packs, we must continue to attract the businesses and the jobs of the future to make sure you, your children, and your grandchildren will prosper in Ohio. As part of this project, Intel will have at least 140 existing Ohio companies, people already do business here, to serve as suppliers uh, as part of this supply chain for the facility. And it's likely that 25 to 30 new companies will call Ohio home. It's more than just Intel. It's an entirely new industry sector born in Ohio overnight. The value of this project will positively impact the people in every single county of our state. Yes, there will be incentives. America and Intel must compete with China and Taiwan and Ohio with other states, but we will get a return on our investment. For every six cents of capital investment the state of Ohio will make, Intel will make a dollar. In return, Ohio will get the largest, most advanced semiconductor facility in the world with jobs that pay on average $135,000 a year which is approximately two and a half times the median income of a family of four in Ohio. It's an investment that will literally pay dividends for generations. Since the day we took office, Governor DeWine and I have made it our mission to distinguish Ohio as the most innovative entrepreneurial state in the Midwest. With this project, let me say with all Ohio humility that perhaps being just the best in the Midwest was underselling our potential. Congratulations to Intel on this announcement. As an American company, you are committing to what our country needs. You are to rebuild a sustainable, resilient domestic supply chain of semiconductors, which is critical to America's national and economic security. Congratulations to Team Ohio. Great work. Great teamwork is hard to beat. Thank you, and congratulations to Governor DeWine. Truly. Uh, he, he has assembled a great team, and uh, Jobs Ohio, you're awesome. Our legislature, uh, thank you for responding so quickly when we ask you to help. Uh, our local partners, thank all of you for having the determination to compete and win 
what will be the biggest economic development project in Ohio history. As I often say, those who collaborate best are the ones who win. We did, and Ohioans won. <laughs> Team Ohio looks forward to continuing our work with Intel to succeed in what they have described as your goal to build the largest, most advanced semiconductor production facility on the planet and to do it right here in Ohio. The partnership begins. Uh, we're not only going to grow it here, but we're going to help in, we're not only going to grow it here, we're going to build it here and we're going to help build the most competitive, talented workforce in the world to help Ohio and America compete and win. America can no longer outsource to Asia the production of the most important ingredient in our manufacturing and national defense supply chain. It's time to get to work, winning a bright future for Ohio, Intel, and America. Let's get started. Thank you. Nice job. you did too, you did great. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Husted. I'm gonna borrow this for just a few minutes, okay? I'll bring it back. Um, right now, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce a very special guest that we have with us here today, U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo. Thank you for welcoming to Ohio. Congratulations, Governor. Congratulations. It's wonderful to be here. Governor, Lieutenant Governor, your senators, we flew out here together, Senators Brown and Senator Portman. Thank you for your leadership. Uh, your congressional delegation is here. Congressman Balderson, Johnson, and Kerry, thank you all um, for making this a reality. And I have to say a special thank you to the Deputy Secretary of Commerce, who is a Ohio native, Don Graves, who also is very proud today, <laughs> native son. So this is an exciting day. This is an exciting day for Ohio. It's an exciting day for America. It's about making things in America. Um, and, you know, President Biden always says, if we want to compete globally, we have to invest domestically. And that's what this is about. So let me give the biggest thank you of the day to Pat Gelsinger, the leader of Intel, for making this massive investment in the United States of America right here in Ohio. Thank, thank you. you. Now, not only will this investment help us to ensure resilient, diverse, and, domestic, and secure domestic supply chains, it's going to create thousands of jobs, more than 10,000 jobs, good-paying American jobs right here in Ohio. And my job at the Commerce Department, we're obsessed with revitalizing America's semiconductor industry. Why? Because they're everywhere you go. Semiconductors are in your smartphones, your cars, medical equipment, everywhere. 20 years ago, we produced 40% of all chips in the United States. We led. And due to these bold investments, we're going to lead again. We're going to lead again. And And by the way, not only are we creating jobs, not only are we re revitalizing manufacturing right here in the heartland, this goes directly to bringing down prices and bringing down inflation. A third of inflation right now is due to the increase in car prices. Why? We're not making enough cars. The auto industry made almost 8 million fewer cars last year than they thought they would. For one reason, they couldn't get their hands on enough chips What's the solution? Make more semiconductors and do it in the United States of America. It's, it really is that simple. It's hard to do, I recognize. <laughs> but more chips means more cars, means prices come down. And by the way, electric vehicles, the average electric vehicle requires 2,000 chips twice as many as, a, as in a traditional non-electric vehicle. And if we are going to try to hit the president's goal of having half of all cars be EVs by 2030, 
then we need to produce more chips, and we need to do it on American soil. Better semiconductors produced in America will allow us to make EV batteries more efficient, capture a larger share of the global EV market, keep manufacturing facilities up and running, and create more American jobs. Now, as exciting as today is, and it is exciting, and we're all grateful to Intel and your leadership, we have to do more. We have to do more. Um, and that, right now, before Congress, is a bill called the United States Innovation and Competition Act. And both of your United States senators are leaders on this. They pass it through the Senate, and we're grateful for your leadership. <laughs> that, that legislation proposes to invest $52 billion in the domestic semiconductor, in domestic semiconductor production. $52 billion to do more of what we're doing here today. Pat and I were this morning with your senators, uh, with President Biden, where we talked about this announcement. And, you know, Intel was clear. If you want to go from $20 billion to $100 billion, possibly right here in Ohio, uh, we'll, and quickly, we need to pass this CHIPS Act. Today is the beginning. It's a massive beginning. It's a massive investment. It will create thousands of jobs. But we need to do more. And again, I just want to thank your delegation for leading on this by allowing us to invest $52 billion of U.S. money into R&D, into semiconductors. We can stimulate more of this, reshore these jobs, and America can lead again in this critical industry, and we can do it in the United States of America. So I'm fired up. Great congratulations to you, Governor. The Governor and I served as governors together. Prior to this gig, I was the Governor of Rhode Island. And um, you're doing a very fine job, and this is a big day. So congratulations to Ohio. Thank you, Intel. And let's start building chips. We want to dive just a little bit deeper and bring some other voices into the conversation. So we have a video for you as we transition to our panel discussion. Let's watch. to invite to the stage Karen Brown and Rob Portman, as well as Congressman Troy Balderson, who represents Ohio's 12th congressional district, which includes Licking County, where we of course are now and where the fab will be located. We'll get everyone situated here and begin in just a moment. Well, thank you all so much for being here today and to be able to hold a conversation. There's a lot of us up on stage, but I think we're going to learn a little bit more. Um, and I really want to start today with Governor DeWine. Today's announcement is certainly exciting, as we know, for right here in Licking County. But can you talk a little bit more about really what it means for the whole state of Ohio? Well, this really is a victory for the whole state of Ohio. Um, they already have over 100 suppliers here in Ohio. Uh, Intel does. Uh, their projection is 30, maybe 40 additional companies, suppliers will locate in, in Ohio. So I think it's, it's a big victory. If you look at a map and where the suppliers are today, they're spread all over the state of Ohio. Uh, so this much amazing activity here is just going to grow and grow. And I, I think, though, the other thing 
uh, and I mentioned what I said a few minutes ago, but the fact that Intel, who could have gone any place in this country, picked Ohio, it sends a signal to any company, whatever business they're in, but certainly the high-tech companies, that when they're thinking about relocating, when they're thinking about growing, they have to look at Ohio. And frankly, we have an amazing team. Uh, Bob Smith, the chairman, J.P. Nassif, heads up Jobs Ohio. Uh, I think Jobs Ohio gives us, frankly, a competitive advantage. Uh, Lydia Mihalik, uh, our departments, uh, we have, a, I think, a real team. But more importantly, we have a great product, and that's Ohio. I mean, we have Ohio, and there, there's just all we want, uh, and, and all, of, all we want people to do is give us a look, and we're going to get make our sh fair share of the sales. So yes, this is but this is a big dig day for Ohio for many many reasons. Secretary Romano, along with Fabs, I think there's something that's on all of our minds today. We're going to need skilled workers to do this. So what can we do to really ensure that we have enough workers trained to fill the jobs that we're creating? Yes, thank you. In fact, Senator Portman and I were talking about this on the way here. Um, facilities like this, all of these jobs are high-skilled jobs. You know, manufacturing, my father uh, was in manufacturing a long time ago in Rhode Island, and I would say, it's not my father's manufacturing anymore. All of this manufacturing at every level, not just the PhDs, require some amount of training. So what that means is we need to work in partnership, public-private partnerships, to have more apprenticeship programs. We have to start in high schools, career and technical education in high schools. These jobs don't all necessarily require a four-year college degree. Some do, obviously. Many don't, but they need training. And the way to do that is the private sector, in this case Pat and his company, have to tell the governor and the federal government in high schools, okay, what are our hiring needs? What are the skills necessary? And then it's on us to build those training programs and those apprenticeship programs and those summer internship programs. It can work. It does work. Um, the, your community colleges can play a tremendous role. But at the end of the day, that's a huge part of why companies decide to locate where they do. Senators Brown and Portman, I want to talk with you for a second. Both of you have called for the funding of the CHIPS for America Act. Can you talk about this legislation, what it really means for domestic semiconductor production, and our ability to compete on the global stage? Uh, thank you. Uh, good to see you all, and thanks for everything that you've all done together, Pat and the governor and all, Lieutenant Governor and, and President Johnson. I, I, coming in on the plane, I was just thinking today, January 21st, 2022, and Licking County, we, um, Ohio, officially buried the term Rust Belt. So, um, and, you know, the, the reach of these jobs, the, the, there will be, for 10 years, at least 5,000 good-paid union, union construction jobs, laborers and pipe fitters, electricians and millwrights and, and, and um, sheet metal workers and carpenters doing this work, and then thousands of jobs for years beyond that, and good paying jobs as everybody's pointed out. But it's on, it's on Rob and me, and on, on Troy and others, to make sure these, this bill gets through the Senate and the House. And uh, Rob and I have teamed up as we did, particularly with his leadership on the infrastructure bill. That will matter as we build out the work we're doing um, with this plant, with these fabs, as you say, but with much more than that, bridges and highways and water and sewer systems and all that we need in Ohio. Because these jobs, as, as Pat pointed out this morning at the White House, these jobs are really everywhere. They're Cleveland, they're Toledo, they're Mansfield, where I grew up, they're Zanesville, um, they're Marietta, they're Cincinnati, they're Dayton, they're everywhere, and it's absolutely going to matter. But we need to pass the CHIPS Act. Uh, and we will continue to work on that as we worked on infrastructure. So um, thanks just for the chance to say a few words, Rob. Well, first, what a day. And, and Pat uh, and Kevin, thank you for your confidence in Ohio. We will earn that confidence. <laughs> uh, and thank you. 
And I, I think uh, Sherrod and uh, Secretary Raimondo are right. This is, this is ultimately about workforce. And Pat, you and I had this conversation many times over the past nine months. And I've known Pat for a while. He's a, he's a patriot. He's also a techie. Uh, he also, therefore, understands that what makes his business successful when able to compete globally is people. And it's all about workforce. And the fact that we have uh, Christina Johnson in our midst, who happens to be not just a great university president, but an expert in this area, particularly with regard to semiconductors, uh, is a huge advantage. So I don't know how much you weighed Christina's background in your final decision, <laughs> but it probably has something to do with it. But Columbus State as well, and some of the best CTE programs in the country. Uh, we have another piece of legislation that I'm trying to get passed uh, that allows us to use Pell Grants, by the way, for CTE and for then training programs that come after CTE. So, thank you. It's what we need, it's what we need. And in Ohio, that, those middle skills jobs, as they're called, don't necessarily need a college degree, but they do need advanced training beyond high school. And, and that is something that Pat is gonna need and Kevin's gonna need in order to make this successful. So, you have shown confidence in us. Uh, it's really a tribute to Ohio's work ethic and to the potential you see for our worker training programs, including here in, in Central Ohio, which I think is second to none. Uh, in terms of the federal role here, it's really very simple. In addition to helping with regard to training and using Pell Grants, in my view, much more effectively, uh, we've got to do something to give our semiconductor industry the ability to play on a level playing field. That's all. And there are a lot of Republican uh, legislators here in the audience, including one of my good friends up here, Troy, Bill Johnson, I see. And, uh, you know, sometimes Republicans will say, well, why should the government help out the private sector? I mean, isn't that something that the free market takes care of? Uh, I'll give you a couple interesting statistics, one you've heard today, 12%, which is that today we only make 12% of the semiconductors in the world. And we developed these things. We, we invented them. <laughs> you know, and soon the Silicon Heartland is going to take it to a new level, right? Uh, so that's good. But... We had 37% of the manufacturing of silicon, of semiconductors and chips back in the 1990s. Now we're down to 12%. And it's going the wrong way, let's be honest. And it is Taiwan, it is Korea, but increasingly it's China. They made a huge investment here. And what they do in these other countries is subsidize the heck out of it. And what we're trying to do with the CHIPS Act is to do a little subsidization, competitive grant programs, more research, basic research at the federal level, and have a competitive, merit-based system where you've got you to show what you're going to do with this and then to leverage that with a huge private sector investment. So the comment was made earlier today that, you know, for a small investment here in Ohio, thanks to the state legislators who are here and to Governor DeWine, Lieutenant Governor Houston, and Jobs Ohio and others, you know, making this commitment and ultimately the taxpayers of Ohio. Let's thank the taxpayers of Ohio. Thank God they're willing to step up and support this. Uh, but that leverages this huge investment that Intel's willing to make. So, I mean, think about this. We're not talking about 20 million, 20 billion dollars, and maybe 100 billion dollars at some point. Uh, what Pat also said, though, you heard him, which is, and I hope I'm not paraphrasing you incorrectly from our conversations today, but he wouldn't have made this commitment today, but for the fact that the United States Senate passed the CHIPS Act, and that it has a very good prospect, we hope, of getting across the finish line because he's taken a big risk here. Because in the global competition that he faces every day, it's not a level playing field. So we gotta level it a little bit. Again, in our American way, depending primarily on the private sector and the innovation and the great training and all the things that make us special as a country, but it also requires a little help, as it did originally, by the way. Mm -hmm. So Christina's research she did at Stanford was supported in part through the taxpayer. And today, we've got to do that, but at a different level. And he's also said, in so many words, I'm really getting in trouble here, but I'm going to keep going. Um, You're doing okay. <laughs> that if this legislation is passed, in other, enacted into law, not just passing the Senate, passed the House, passed, signed by the President, that the prospects of going from 20 billion to 100 billion and building out these fabs uh, is much increased. We will much go increased. bigger and faster. We will go bigger and faster. So, and it's not just Intel, by the way, uh, it's other companies as well, globally, that are willing to invest in America and other American companies willing to expand their operations here. So Ohio needs to be at the forefront. We need to be at the cutting edge. 
but with the work uh, that I know Troy's doing in the House, Sherrod has already done in, in the Senate, Bill's doing in, in the House, uh, and with uh, President Biden's support, we've got to get this done. And if we get it done, truly we'll be able to say, we are the Silicon Heartland. <laughs> Senator Portman, I'm going to build on your answer there. And for one last question, we have time for one more question. We will have media availability after the live event with some of our speakers, obviously. But Congressman Balderson, speaking of what uh, Senator Portman's talking about, the House is currently working on a response to the Senate bill that contains funding for the CHIPS Act. So tell us, what is the outlook right now for getting funding really across that finish line? <laughs> What's the mood in Washington on this with your colleagues? Well, well Michaela, I, I just figured out as I was sitting here, I'm in the middle of the hot seat here. And uh, <laughs> as we keep talking about that, and my colleagues, Mike Carey's here, and, and as, as Rob said, Bill's oh, here. My and my, my, my new best friend is Al from <laughs> Intel, and uh, we're, we're going to be spending a lot of time together. He's in the third row, just so everybody knows who, who he is, and, and he does the government relations piece. But um, we're, we're going to get it done. Uh, in, in each day as it goes, uh, it gets better. And Congresswoman Beatty's not here today, and, 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 and Joyce and I have a really good relationship, and Congressman Stivers and, and Congressman T. Berry, you know, set that tone of, of having that bipartisan support, and, and we're going to get this done. And look, I live here. I, I, this is in the 12th congressional district. I want to do backflips <laughs> up and down through here and run around and start dancing uh, be, for what's happening. Yeah. Uh, and, if nothing else, it, this investment's for the kids. We haven't really said a lot about the kids, but the kids that live in this region, their lives change today, and that's, that's it. And, uh, Michaela, we'll, we'll get it done, because there's a lot of recording going on out here right now, and I'm going <laughs> to lean on my colleagues, and uh, we're going to work, and we're going to get this done. And, and we're going to make it strong, and we're going to bring him. And if we have to, I know that Mike and Bill will help me, and I know Joyce will. If she was here, and Steve Stivers and Pat would also do the same thing, we'll get him here to the high. If they need to see a place, we'll take him out to that farmland out there to let them know what that CHIPS Act is going to do for this country. So thank you very much. As a mom of a 9 and an 11-year-old, I'll hold you to that. How yes, about that? Sounds good. Well, thank you, Governor. Thank you to all our panelists that we've had here today. Um, really great conversation. We did cover a lot of ground. Before we wrap up, let's quickly summarize the key details of today's announcement, though. American-based Intel is investing an initial $20 billion to create a massive new semiconductor manufacturing site here in Licking County. The investment is the largest ever by a private company in Ohio, ever. More than 20,000 new jobs will be created, including 3,000 Intel jobs, earning an average of $135,000 per year in salary. This is the first manufacturing facility of its kind in the entire Midwest, and Intel's most advanced semiconductor manufacturing operation in the world. This facility will allow for increased domestic semiconductor production, thereby reducing our reliance on foreign countries. Thank you again to all of our speakers today and everyone in the audience watching, also those of you at home, online, and in the office. We hope you enjoyed our program. Intel's commitment is a generational opportunity, as we've talked about, to add a new industry sector, creating possibilities for Ohioans for years to come, all while helping the United States compete in the global marketplace. We were built for this opportunity, guys, so get ready to lead the way.